thanks for joining us, David. It's obviously 20 years since you represented GB at Sydney 2000. Having it in sort of these strange times where there's pretty much no sport for the 20th anniversary, has it given you time to reflect on it in any way? Yeah, I mean, lots to, lots to reflect on. It's normally through my kids, actually, because uh, uh, the, the kids are very good. They're, I've got three children. They're, they all kind of come up with their, their, their different things that they were doing at, at, at the time. And, you know, do you remember doing this, Dad, and uh, and all that? And, and yeah, it, it, was, it was very special times. I mean, 20, 20 years ago now, it seems a lifetime, <laughs> an absolute lifetime. So I had I, I actually had written a diary, so I went back and had a little read of you know what what we'd done was when we went out there the holding camp and the whole uh, kind of uh, experience uh so just to remind myself of what the, 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 those sort of uh, you know the the results that uh, all of those sorts of things um of course i've got some very clear memories of, of sydney and the olympics itself wow amazing and keeping that diary that must have you i bet you're glad you wrote that that you can reminisce <laughs> about it through reading all that stuff yeah, and and it was lovely. So at my t time, the kids were, were were very young, so that you know the, the normal sort of diary when they've got their handprints all in there. And uh, uh, yeah, I mean it it just brought back wonderful memories of uh, of a very very special time, and you know something that I reflect upon you know quite proudly um, to 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 be. You know, one, one of the Welsh uh, representatives out there uh, in terms of the, the Olympics and uh, and doing what we did. You know, it, it, it was a special time. Nice. And um, do you remember, if I can take you back to 2000, do you remember the build up to it and were you confident of making the squad? Um, well, actually, it's, it started a little bit earlier than that, actually, Rob. Um, mm -hmm. I was thinking of retiring because uh, I played a long time for Wales. Yeah. Um, you know, to, uh, approaching 15, 16 years, uh, as it were, uh, after the Commonwealth Games in 1998, uh, mm. where we went to Kuala Lumpur. Um, and uh, the coach of the England team then was a chap called Barry Dancer, who's an Australian. And he was going on to become the Great Britain coach. And we had a conversation uh, during the games uh, where he said, well, you know, what are your plans? What are you thinking of doing? And I told him then that I was thinking of retiring and so on. He said, well, look, um, Great Britain uh, coming up, the Olympic Games in Sydney. Um, I'm not going to promise you anything, uh, but, you know, somebody that has your sort of experience. And, you know, I was playing, still playing pretty well, actually, even at the age of 36. Right. <laughs> um, well, 34 I was then uh, in, in Kuala Lumpur, but 36 I would have been when I went to the Olympics. I was still fit uh, and, and strong and, and, and so on. So, you know, it, it, it kind of resonated with me and he, he didn't promise me anything. He just said, look, you know, you know, we'll get you along, you'll be in the training squads and let's see what happens. And um, I'm so pleased I took him up on that sort of conversation and, uh, and the rest, as they say, is history. Wow, that's amazing. And do you remember like, the moment he selected you for the squad? And do you remember like where you were and how you found out? Yeah, we um, we always, uh, the Great Britain squad, so I've been in the cycle previously and, and, and sadly had the, um, sorry, you're not going, uh, conversation. Uh, and it's all, it was always done at Bisham Abbey, which is the sort of training home for, for Great Britain hockey in, in that sense and still is uh, in terms of a performance centre. Uh, and you, you kind of know what, what's going on. So um, I, I was going to be part of the management setup there. So I was going to be vice captain of the team. So they already sort of uh, mentioned that to me, not, you know, weeks, months, years before, but, you know, a, a couple of days before. And, and so I, 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 yeah, I knew I was, I was kind of going, but I mean, it was, it, it was a lovely, still a lovely conversation to have with the coach. There's lots of very, very disappointed people that have been on a, you know, four-year cycle, some, some longer than that in terms of training and commitment. Um, but of course, you know, once you say they, they say that you're going, you still got to get there and 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 then you know, start the games, start the first match, first match against Holland on the 16th of September was, you know, that's when you become an Olympian. You don't, you, until you actually start performing out there, uh, you, you're still, you know, somebody that's aspiring in that, in that area. Yeah, absolutely. Do you remember traveling out there and what were your first impressions of Sydney? 
Well, we, we flew in our holding camp um, uh, was in Brisbane, <laughs> which is fantastic because I mean, the weather, you know, it's up the Gold Coast there, it, it was really warm. Um, Great Britain had taken over a, a, a rather smart sort of hotel, golf complex, etc., where you could go and acclimatize. Um, so we flew in there uh, two weeks before the Olympics. Um, we'd already been out previously in the months leading into the Olympics to uh, New Zealand and Australia, a kind of a, you know, recce in, in that sense and playing out there, understanding what, what was going on. Um, so we flew into Brisbane. Um, I got my accreditation at the, the Gabba in Brisbane. So I'm a cricketer. I love my cricket as well. So uh, to be getting that, that accreditation put around your neck and you know off you off you go was was, was kind of special as well. So Brisbane it was um, lovely. Uh, you know we we weren't supposed to do too much when we got off the plane because of you know, again climatization. So um, it was all very very gentle. And then the build up to the games started we had some uh, some matches up there against uh, some state sides and so on and then we flew into sydney um about a week or so before the games um a lot of teams kind of try and balance out how how long you're in the the olympic village because it can you know whilst it's spectacular it's fantastic uh, etc. It can be quite sapping in terms of your energy levels and uh, and everything else. And a lot of you know, uh, athletes, athletes, for instance, uh, usually fly in just a few days before, do their event, and out they go. If you sort of mean it's it. But for us, because we're there for the whole two weeks uh, in terms of our playing, uh, we went there a week before and, and just got a, got into the village uh, warm up games on on the on the main. You know, astroturf and and really familiarise myself with what we were going to be doing. Yeah, and how did you find the Olympic Village? What was that like in a sort of multi-sport event with loads of different athletes? Oh right, I mean, I haven't had the experience of the Commonwealth Games where, with with Wales um, in 1998, uh, where you got a, about five thousand or so athletes. Um, very similar feel. Kuala Lumpur was fantastic. Place. The, the, the village there w w was well put together, uh, but the Olympics is on a different scale. Uh, you know, 10,000 athletes, 20,000 press, not that they're in the village, but they're all involved in the game. You know, it's just on a massive, massive scale. Um, and it, it just, um, in, a, in many respects, made, made you feel very, very special, actually, uh, because you, you know, you're going into a place where you, you want it for nothing. So, you know, the dining hall was open for 24 hours a day. Uh, we had this lovely sort of um, machines on, on all the, the street corners as you wandered around the village where you had a, a special Olympic coin, which you put the, uh, the coin in and, and down came some water or Coca-Cola if you wanted or whatever it was. And, you know, and the coin came out the bottom. Everything was free. I mean, it was just an amazing sort of experience where you're... You know, you're treated like the the athlete that I, I suppose that you, you you were, and 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 the games were just spectacular in that sense. Yeah, amazing. Did you go to the opening ceremony? Yeah, I mean, there was a lot of talk around that, Rob. Um, mainly because we were playing the next day. Game one was against Holland. Big match. Um, it was in the afternoon, two thirty uh, start. So. One of the troubles uh, that you have with the, the opening ceremony is lots of standing around, lots of waiting and, and so on. And then obviously you march uh, around the, um, the stadium. So we had a lot of conversations around that and we put in some coping strategies to help us with that. Um, but I mean, it, I have to say um, it was just spectacular. Um, stadium Australia, uh, which is obviously where England won the rugby three years later uh, against Australia. I mean, just a spectacular place, 110,000 people. Um, I remember, you know, assembling with the rest of the team that, were, that was there. There was only about 300 of us at that time, because as I said, a lot of the athletes flew in after the opening ceremony and so on. And you took your place in, in, in the march, and, and, and as you're entering the, the, the stadium, the, the announcers, you know, obviously announced that Team GB are coming into the stadium, and there was a real, you know, energy um, that was fantastic because obviously, you know, Britain in Australia, uh, etc., still, you know, highly thought after. And then, and, and it, it, it was just a spectacular entrance, and um, 
to walk around there to see all the other athletes to be part of that it was a real buzz a real high and you just wanted them to get on with the games you know wanted to get started it was significant yeah, amazing and on to the games your first games against holland um quite a tough game to start but a very proud moment for you representing gb and being in the yeah league. yeah i mean time again time to reflect and i I think it's more because of my age and um, and the journey that I'd gone through to, to get there. You know, um, as I said, I was 36 when I went to the Olympics, which um, is old. <laughs> um, and uh, I think I, I'd matured as an athlete, as a player, as a person. And, and I, I gave myself an opportunity just before the game, just to... You know, we'd sung the national anthem and, and, and everything. And you, you just you just look around. My parents were there. And sadly, my wife was flying out a few days later. So she missed the opening game. But she was there for the latter stages uh, of the tournament. And it was just so lovely to, to kind of, you know, take a deep breath. Know that all of your sort of dreams were coming together. And, and it was just about to start. And, and that was the big thing. And what I wanted to do more than anything else, was, was kind of stay in the moment, um, enjoy the fact that I was becoming an Olympian, but I wanted to play well. And, uh, and of course, what you, you don't want to do is get distracted by the fact that it was the Olympic Games, there were thousands of people watching, you know, um, lots of friends, relatives at home watching on TV. Everybody's, you know, interest is there. Everybody's peaked by the, the Olympic Games. It, it is the ultimate, uh, uh, you know, tournament, uh, event to play in. Um, but that very special moment when the ball was passed back and, you know, off, off you start playing, you know, it, 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 was, it was brilliant. Yeah, amazing. Do you remember much about the other games, um, sort of individual moments at all? Yeah, very. I, I, it, was a game, it was a tournament uh, role of two, two sort of halves. Um, we, we, we had a 4-2 a loss against uh, Holland to start off with, but we missed a penalty. Um, we'd also missed a couple of good short corner opportunities. And the capital, uh, Callum Giles, who was you know, one of the best in the world uh, at that time, uh, a short corner flicking. And, and, and you know, sadly, we didn't get, get on, the, on the board then. Uh, we had a, a bit of a disaster against Pakistan in the next game. And it kind of highlighted uh, our inconsistencies because... We then had two draws, and this is the middle section of the of the tournament where we played against Malaysia and Canada, and and got two two all draws um, against Malaysia. We were two 0 up at half time, and we had to beat Malaysia to keep our hopes alive of a semi final uh, spot. Yeah. Um, and that again showed our inconsistencies. And then literally game five of the tournament, um, we played Germany. Uh, and we beat them 2-1. And the Germans were one of the top teams, if not the, the favourites, to, uh, to, to win the Olympics. And, uh, and in beating Germany, <coughs> we, we kind of knocked them out of the, the, the tournament at, at the semi-final. And, and the Dutch, who, would, uh, who were making their way down to their... Um, the, there's always a hospitality area. And, and in Sydney, in Darling Harbour, they had a hospitality area because they'd done everything they could and they felt that Germany would beat us. And therefore, they were knocked out of the semi-final. So that was the end of the, the group stages for them. You know, the, the Dutch and the Germans were all very much about getting to semi-finals. Um, and that was the pedigree of their, uh, of their hockey in, in many respects. <laughs> and they had to be pulled out of the, of the, of the, um, of the hospitality areas. They, uh, they started to have a couple of drinks um, because we had beaten Germany. And they were back into the semi-final and Germany was out. So it was all, you know, swings and roundabouts. So we... We were um, inconsistent, I think. Um, we had so many uh, opportunities. We had a really you know, top side. As I said, we beat Germany. Uh, we could have done that to any of the top teams. But it was the consistency against Malaysia and Canada, really, that took us out of the semi-final. And, you know, Rob, when you, when you get to these sort of events, they, they can go in a flash, even though it's a two-week-long event. Um, you have to really keep staying in, in what you're doing and what you're trying to, to process. And um, it, it just went in a flash. Um, and we could have got to a semi final. We're literally, you know, two wins away against Canada and Malaysia from doing that. Um, and that would be the, the thing that stays with me for the, for the rest of my day is that, you know, a semi final opens up the possibility of a medal. The second part of the tournament then folds in. So once you don't get to the semi-final, 
you then got to start to look, think about, okay, we want to come as high up the, the, the table as possible because of lots of funding is involved there and, and the Great Britain cycle, uh, as you'll probably be aware, is, is done over four years, a uh, minimum of four years. And therefore to achieve our goal, which is a top six sort of um, position to secure funding for, for British hockey, etc., was the next target. And uh, we beat India uh, and then we lost to Germany in the fifth, sixth playoff. So we came sixth overall. Um, so kind of, you know, bit, bit of sweet. There's the, the what if, we could have got to a semi-final and then who knows um but we you know came in the top six in the world which was you know, in line with our ranking which you know is something that again we we can i suppose be proud of fair enough and um what was it like post tournament for you did you um did you keep on playing for many more years um <clears throat> i i did uh, as as player coach in, a, in terms of a club uh, club uh, role um I did also uh, do a little bit more for, for Wales, um, probably one more um, tournament. I'm trying to remember where it was. I mean, I, I, I went back and did some coaching. So I worked then with Mike Williamson with the Welsh team in 2002. I was assistant coach. He was the coach at uh, the Commonwealth Games in Manchester, which was a lot of fun. Um, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, so, you know, kind of got back into coaching there. Having spent so long, uh, Rob, playing hockey and traveling the world and doing all those sorts of things, <laughs> um, I needed really to get back and, and, and start to pursue my career within teaching, um, uh, et cetera, and really start to give quite a lot back um, to the family. who'd obviously given up a lot for, for me uh, as well. Um, so played on a little bit longer, yeah, um, and did some coaching there you know, with Wales in, in, in particular, um, but really started to pursue my career. Fair enough. Have you still got your kit from um, from Sydney? <laughs> I, I have. I, I, in fact, it's almost becoming quite retro now. The kids, the kids are interested in wearing some of it for, for training and things like that. Yeah, I've got all. I've got all my blazers uh, from the, the great big Welsh red blazers that we went to Kuala Lumpur in. Um, uh, I've got all my blazers, all the all the track suits. I have to say, I'm not sure they I fit into them. Um, <laughs> moment um but yeah i've got some of the kids my some of my shirts i gave to, to some of the clubs i played for uh etc but you know we we got spoiled with all the kit uh, that we we got given I, I, you know, i've got so much left um in, in the garage somewhere um yeah it's very much there and, and you know from time to time i go and open the big suitcase again and have a look to reminisce nice and are you still in touch with uh, your teammates from sydney uh, yes, some uh, some are good friends. So John Wyatt was the captain. Um, he's working now, I, I think, for in 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 uh, the FIH, so in, in the highest echelons of, of world hockey. Uh, Simon Mason, who was the goalkeeper at the time, um, was my roommate out, out there. Yeah, we 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 still come back. And um, people like um, Mark Pern is is a coach now at Surbiton Hockey Club. Uh, and obviously, he was the young young. And coming talented, really talented, skillful player at Sydney. I think he was 18 or 19 at the time. Um, you know, he's I've seen him on the circuit uh, coaching and, and, and things like that. Uh, we tend not to see one another uh, unless it's on the you know the side of a hockey pitch or or <clears throat> in, in those sort of areas. Um, I do send, tend to see some of the the coaches still. Uh, John John Cop, who was the assistant coach there, we, we, we catch up from time to time, um, but. No, otherwise, no, sadly. Fair enough. And um, after Sydney and after the Olympics um, that have gone on since then, the exposure hockey gets, do you feel that the, the sport grows? Yeah, I, I, I do, Rob. I, I think um, the, the game has obviously changed. It's changed in a lot of ways. Uh, and I think it's become probably more appealing to, to the viewer and therefore more appealing to uh, television to get involved and you know there's that there's that triangle between the sport television and the sponsor which keeps all sports going uh, and hockey's no different to that and I, and I think <clears throat> you know having the European um, club championships televised um, obviously the European Cup uh, those sorts of games, World Cups uh, Olympic Games 
uh, the, the success of the, the, the Olympic teams and, and the girls last time in Rio was fantastic, you know, really galvanised a lot of interest in, in, in hockey. And, and I think, you know, Great Britain have, have a, a really decent team now um, and they have been more consistent. I think the central contracts have allowed that to happen. So if I think back to my day where, you know, you were, you were very much training in the morning, going out to do your job and, and then training in the evening, etc. You, you're, you're kind of a, a semi-professional in, in that context because you're building your training around your, your work commitments. And a lot of the younger players now are, you know, becoming centralised contracted players with, with England or Great Britain, etc. I think about the British team there. Um, but there's some some very tidy, you know, young Welsh players coming through. Um, you know, Jacob Tra uh, Traper, uh, Rupert Shipperley. Um, I've had the privilege of coaching um, Reese Bradshaw at uh, at uh, Exeter University, Jimmy Carson, Ben Francis. You know, there's some really uh, tidy Welsh guys coming through, and and I really you know wish them well in in in, in progressing through. In, into the Great Britain sides and, and, and beyond. Um, so I think, you know, hockey's in a healthy position. Uh, I think the nature of the game allows it to be there. That with the four quarters and the south pass, it's all very exciting, very fast. Um, and players now need to have a, a repertoire of skills and, and attributes to, to, to be the best players they can. And, um, you know, it's, it's a lot of fun coaching it and it's a lot of fun watching it now. Yeah, and talking about Rupert and Jacob who are currently in the GB setup. Uh, have you been following their progress a lot? And I bet you're hoping. Yeah, well, well, sadly, they, they play for Hampstead and Westminster against the young young bucks of uh, the University of Exeter in the Premier League. So, yes, I've seen them up close and and uh, and, and, and and personal in that sense. Uh, and they're very 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 good uh, players. Um, have the attributes, obviously, to become um, uh, Olympians in that in that context. Um, and uh, I did go and say hello to, to Jacob uh, in particular when he came down and played at um, at Exeter because uh, I knew obviously of his Welsh his Welsh background. So I just said Look, hello. Um, you know, I, I'm I'm this old old man now that uh, played at Sydney back in 2000. You know, I hope I hope you get to Tokyo uh, this year. And of course, uh, little did we know it was going to be put back a year to uh, to 2021. So fingers crossed. You know they stay fit and healthy, and they uh, and and they can achieve their their dreams and aspirations as well and get to the Olympics. They could obviously sort of break a record in a way and and be um, Welsh players at the Olympics. Um, are you like rooting for them a lot because of that? Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely, and 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 seeing you know as I mentioned just before, seeing the game as it is. Um, and a, a really good friend, a friend of mine who I played with, who became. You know, the Welsh coach, Zach, Zach Jones, uh, I'm really delighted for him. He's gone on to take on a, a role in Great Britain. Uh, and, uh, and, and he's a he's a good hockey man. He's, he's a really nice guy, but he knows his stuff. He, 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 I think he'd do really well in that environment. Um, and, and he should be suitably proud of, of what he's done over the period of time in bringing these, you know, Welsh hockey up. Um, you know, we've... Back in 1999, I think we, we we came sixth in European Cup, which kind of equaled our, our uh, Welsh's record, Welsh's record in, in, in that sort of area. And I think for, for for Welsh players to be looking to get to the Olympic Games and play for Great Britain and so on, Wales have got to be in in the higher echelons of of, of European hockey in particular, but then obviously world hockey and playing in the World League as well as giving them exposure to that. Uh, and that's the only way through it. You know, you, you've got to be able to perform at the highest level consistently. And, and with that, hopefully more Welsh players will come through and, and, and enjoy what I did at the Olympic Games. Yeah. And uh, how much are you involved in hockey now? You're director of sports at King Edward School Bath. Do many of the young students that's right. about the Olympics? Uh, <laughs> Um, and I, I've done the other assembly on it, um, etc. No, I'm, I mean, I, I'm really enjoying my role as, as director of sport at, at King Edwards in Bath. Um, it, it's more of a, you know, I, I like it to have my own train set and you can, you know, you try and move it in, in, in the direction that you want and building on the, the historical uh, strengths of the school, you know, the hockey, the rugby and, and so on and doing my coaching as well. I like the management, the leadership side of that. Um, which is which is very appealing. Um, 
and as I said, I, I've done a couple of seasons at the University of Exeter, uh, coaching in the Premier League, and uh, you know, I, I'm pleased with how that went um, and how the boys responded. So, yeah, staying in coaching is, is something I like to do. I, I love that interaction. Um, and I suppose, in a way, like passing on my experience. Yeah, uh, that's fantastic. Um, it's been great speaking to you and talking about Sydney and the Olympics and everything. So thank you for your time. No worries, Rob.